with Trade and Perform Coaching with uh, the Trade Review for Wednesday, uh, December 18th, 2013. So um, obviously we're all a little tired. The quick disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only. Nothing in the blog, on the um, Twitter stream, the stock Twitch stream, um, or in these videos should be considered a trading recommendation. <clears throat> Let me tell you the point of the video is actually, the, the, the entire point of this whole project is to simply take traders who generally are struggling, not meeting their full potential, and are actually losing money, and turn them around into consistently winning traders. Now, unlike other guys, I'm not, I don't hype trades. I don't talk about um, home runs a lot. And I, I really actually don't care a lot about 40-point moves in the market. They look great, but it's kind of like a Vegas casino. There's a few winners, and everyone else tends, tends to be the sucker, right? I don't want that for the guys um, who uh, follow me. So I don't talk a lot about that. What I focus on is, is instead is what is extremely achievable for the majority of traders, and that is a, um, a focused, concerted effort at getting two to four points a day, occasionally six, right? Some of my traders get more. And repeating that process over and over and over again on a very high odd strategy, right? And taking that money out day after day after day. That's what I do. That's what my focus is. If you're interested in that, you, you found someone good to follow. If you're not interested in that uh, and you want trade calls, consistent trade calls, I don't call out all my trades. I just don't. I'm an incredibly aggressive trader. By nature, I've been doing this for 20 years. Uh, the goal here is to get people who are um, just starting off been struggling for a couple of years um, or who just haven't found traction and have that dream, which we all have, right, of trading full time. Because even if you're making a lot of money, who the heck wants to go to work for someone else when you can work for yourself and keep all the money? So first things, let's go into the day. Um, starting off on the day in the uh, uh, pre-market look, I talked about how it was essential that we got above the white zone, but that also how this entire area, I didn't make it a zone, but this entire area, right, was actually fairly critical from 1778 all the way up to 1782 and all the way across. And here's the cool thing about that. If you look at yesterday, right, obviously the bottom of the white zone held perfectly, gave a nice rotation down to the downside. It didn't give a great rotation up out of the gate. And so moderate to conservative uh, traders, and we're all aggressive by nature. If you're trading futures, you're trading leveraged, you're an aggressive individual. It just matters how aggressive, right? Um, they didn't take this, right? And that's fine. No big deal. But it did reject out of the white zone, and that's a fairly reliable trade, right? Um, and gave a nice rotation down from uh, 78 down to 72. If you were uh, with me yesterday, you saw that I was doing a live webinar uh, right in here on what to expect for post-Fed announcement, right? And I covered this trade live. I didn't flip and get long, probably because I had just too many things going on at one time. It's hard to do a webinar. It's hard to coach others and trade for yourself at the same time. And uh, I was probably doing one too many things. I did not get my two point trade here, but it was certainly a valid trade. There was tick divergence. You can go look at the back of that video and you'll see me call the tick divergence in real time and you'll see me having covered that short in real time. So um, at any rate, this only for the most aggressive traders um, in my flock took it. Um, the uh, others simply had a very slow morning. There wasn't a lot to do, right? But there was a couple of keys. And the, one of the things I said in the morning is, in addition to getting above the white zone, right? And then the key of getting above Tuesday's high was the NQ. So let's look at NQ really quickly and see what it did because I think it's important. And if we look at NQ, here's NQ early in the day. I'm going to spread this out for you so everyone can see it. Okay. ES didn't roll over to all the way over here. We're just trading sideways. Look how early NQ took a nosedive early in the day, okay? NQ's been le leading us. This was a big clue, right? Um, the next thing that I uh, spoke about a lot is I said um, uh, 3450 was a critical area in, um, in NQ. It needed to hold above, which we did not. That comes into play later in the day, okay? So that's rolling over. This isn't an NQ trade review, so we're going to flip back over to our ES. Okay. On ES, finally, we roll to the downside. NQ is weak coming in. you got to pay attention to both of those. They give you a, a clue a lot of times. Okay. First time into the zone yields you two points, right? 
Now, I said I would not trade between 12 and 1 o'clock, and I didn't. I actually went to lunch. I, I didn't expect a lot to happen between 12 and 1 o'clock. I hammer the first time into the zone for a reason. It takes essentially um, two to three trades, depending on how big your stop is, to make up for one loss. First time into the zone, two points. Second time into the zone, loss, right? First time into the zone, two points. And I'm going to show you this even after the news, right? News comes out. First time into the zone, two plus points. Actually, if you held this thing, this is 40 points right here, guys. Uh, crazy, crazy, crazy move. Okay, so we, we got, I think I hammered across the point. Again, the deal is for most of my clients, right? Um, if you took the trade here, two points. If you took the trade here, which was totally valid, two points. Four points and you're done. These guys do it day after day after day after day and they keep building their account size. They keep building their trade size. It's a significant deal. Okay, so moving on. What did we talk about to stay safe after the Fed? First of all, um, don't over trade it, um, which I could actually argue that I did so myself to a certain degree. Not awfully. I was profitable, but not profitable enough. Um, number two, big fat rotations. How do we keep ourselves safe? Well, we double our parameters. If I'm usually looking for a six point rotation, I want 12. If I'm usually looking for 10, I want 20. So let's discuss that. 1776, right? 12 points back, put that 10 puts us back at 1766. 12 puts us back at uh, 1764 behind this zone, right? The next zone down and the first touch puts us at initial support. At initial support, I expect responsive buyers consistently. I can't stress that enough. Responsive buyers were good for 40 points. Pushed us straight up into initial resistance. Again, an initial resistance, one of the things I spoke about on that video, it's posted right below this trade review, okay, in, in the blog right below here. Um, I spoke about needing wider stops might be necessary. Now, here's the deal. I'm so conditioned to putting two-point stops on that I didn't take my own advice. The market moves fast, and it's hard to line all these things up in your head. At least it is for me. I'm not perfect. Uh, I, I'm not the best trader in the world. Uh, I'm a good trader. I'm just not the best trader. I'm, and that's the whole key is you don't have to be the best trader. You just have to be good enough. So let's look at this. Um, we got rejection the first time into the white zone. That was good for two points, right? Uh, into initial resistance, right? I had a two-point stop behind. If I just adjusted my stop by that one point that I discussed in the meeting prior to the Fed, this would have turned into another two-point trade. Instead, I took a loss on it. No big deal. Um, I took a... Um, Excuse me, I don't know that I took a loss here. I took a loss here. I forget. One of these two I took a loss. I might have actually managed this one properly. I have to go back and look. Either way, adjusting your stop by one point, putting it three points instead of two points behind, as discussed um, in that video, uh, gave you a profitable trade here. Also, look at the symmetry, how beautiful this is. I talked about this whole area being important. We broke above Tuesday's highs, right, into initial resistance. Backside tested into Tuesday's highs and take off again. Very, very clean trading. I'm not going to go into micro detailing this because I, I think I did that in the pre, uh, pre-market. If you put these two things together, it'll give you a, a clear before and after picture. Continuing with the first trade concept. First time into the zone, two point plus rotation. Um, four points in a lot of cases, five points. First time into the zone, two point rotation. First time into the highs, two point rotation down. So um, in my estimation, right, um, if you took every trade set up properly and you allowed yourself just a hair more room than you normally do, and you looked at the, the rotations, right, 20 points off of 1760 if you're looking for rotation up, that puts you in the 1780 neighborhood, okay, looking for a trade. You're not getting crushed by this entire move, right? Um, if you're looking for a 12-point rotation up before you're taking a short, right? This is the last swing right here at uh, 82. 12 points up puts you at 92, 94, okay? Where does that put you? First time into the zone, 12 points up from here. We swing down here, right? Again, if you're paying attention, 12 points up. So let's call this um, 1799, uh, 1790, okay? 1790 puts you at 1802, okay? 1802 puts you right back here, okay, with a reasonable stop behind. So you needed just a hair more than two points. It still got you flat. 
and it puts you in the point being is it puts you in the neighborhood of getting a first touch this is the second touch I wouldn't have taken it right going too fast in my head the rotations keep you safe guys uh, they give you areas to look at so that you're not you're not judging every little tick when the markets are going rampantly nuts and you can use this model anytime markets are going berserk right stretch out just automatically double your targets for entry it'll at least keep you safe won't guarantee you a winning trade right but it'll help you keep your trading equity and your mind much safer and much easier to digest the speed of the moves right we're not computers we're humans we have to adjust anyways my name is Simon. I'm a trading perform coaching. Um, I, I did my best to call out some great trades yesterday. I had a profitable day, but nowhere near what I would have liked to have done, which would have been just simply hold on to this long. I took five or six points out of this trade, nailed the long, um, and uh, you know, at any rate, left 35 or 40 points on the table. Uh, that happens some days. And these days are rare. If you're basing your entire trading career off of getting 40 ES points in a day, good luck to you. If you're basing your entire trading career off of bagging two points on a regular daily basis and getting one or two trades a day, you actually have a very high odds of making a lot of money in this market. So anyways, I look forward to uh, speaking to uh, everyone out there le um, later today, actually, because it's early morning here. And uh, we will go from there. Have a great day, guys. My name is Simon. Bye-bye.